previously on Professor Thorgy Review. While making his worst movies of 2015 list, Aaron accidentally unleashed the evil that was Jim and the Hologram. He attempted to send this evil back to hell by reviewing it, but Aaron had no idea how terrible this film actually was and it refused to die. Now, to try and banish this evil for good, Aaron must turn to a darker power. Will he succeed? Stay tuned to find out. I feel like I'm forgetting something today. Did you take out the trash? Yeah. Did you do the laundry? Yeah. Did you use a Necronomicon to send Jim and the Holograms back to hell? Yeah. Oh wait, I was going to, but then I made a sandwich, so no. Hello everyone, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, and welcome to another Thorgy Reviews. And today on the show, I'm going to attempt to seal away one of the worst movies of last year. And when sending demons back to hell, might I recommend the Necronomicon. That's right, Aaron. The Necronomicon Ex Mortis, roughly translated, The Book of the Dead, written by the Dark Ones, this lovely edition comes bound in human flesh and inked in real, genuine human blood. No pig's blood here, folks. And now it can be yours for the low, low price of one soul and all human damnation. Call now. Operators are standing by. Forever. Wow, mysterious voice. That sure sounds like a great deal. And all I have to do is just sign over my- Hey, wait a second! That's not a good deal! You're evil, aren't you? Just call the number. I don't know... Message and data rates may apply. Yeah, you're definitely evil. Alright, if I'm going to try and use this thing, then I'm going to need the help of someone who's used it before. I have to study under a master of the dark arts. And that is why today, I'm going to review Ash vs. Evil Dead. Now, before I begin the review, let me go ahead and fill in all of you who don't know what the Evil Dead is, or why that kid from Pokemon is trying to fight it. It's, uh... It's Pokemon Month on the rest of this channel, so I had to fit it into this show somehow. Evil Dead was a movie created in the early 80s by Sam Raimi that was about a group of college kids going up to a cabin in the woods for the weekend, where they find the previous tenant was a professor who was studying the Necronomicon, roughly translated, the Book of the Dead. They play his tape recorder and awaken the evil in the woods, which begins possessing them and turning them into deadites, until Ash is the only one left, but even he wasn't left untouched as the evil got into his hand and made it go bad, so he lopped it off at the wrist. But he then replaced it with this handy dandy chainsaw. Groovy. Greatest line in movie history. To try and send the evil back from whence it came, he used the book to open a portal, but found himself sucked back in time. From there, he led an army to fight these medieval deadites, and then once again used the book to return himself home. Deadites gone forever. Mostly. That's the story of the Evil Dead trilogy, and honestly, this is my favorite horror franchise of all time. No other horror franchise out there has had such creativity, mixes scares and humor so well, has such a likable and charming protagonist, and has such good-looking monsters. All other horror franchises pale in that comparison. Freddy Krueger, just a bad dream. Michael Myers, a trick-or-treater with issues. And Jason Voorhees, oh, 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 let's just pick him up out of Camp Crystal Lake, because I've got a place far more suiting for him. That's right, not only is this one of the best horror franchises of all time, it's also one of the best cult movies of all time. I don't know how it is these days with the internet, but back when I was a kid, the only way to find out about this was the same way that you get welcomed into a secret club. 
Like everyone I knew who had seen this movie, they had never seen any advertisement for it, they had never heard any reviews of it, they had all found out about it the exact same way, by having a random friend come up to them and going, hey man, you need to see this, and then handing them a copy like they were about to teach them a secret handshake. In fact, I'm going to continue that tradition right here. To all you kids out there who last week got mad at me because I said you might not be old enough to see Deadpool, Evil Dead 2 is on Hulu right now, and it's way more f***ed up than Deadpool. I feel like I've made a difference here today. So when you have a film franchise with such a die-hard audience, you're of course going to try and bring it back, and try they have. This franchise has had comic books and video games that both tried to tell what happened to Ash after the third movie, and none of them have been that memorable other than that time that Ash fought the Marvel Universe. I'm not kidding you, that actually happened. But then they also tried to reboot the franchise with a new Evil Dead film a couple years ago, and I'll admit, I liked that remake, but it still lacked the magic and the charisma of that original film. But now they basically said, screw trying to reintroduce people to this, and they brought the original hero, Ashley Williams himself, back to star in a brand new TV series, and unlike those comic books and movies that try to tell what happened to him after the third film, this one is actually being made by the original director, writers, producers, and stars of the original trilogy. And while it's far more jokey than those original films, it's still way closer to capturing that original magic than anything has come so far. Now, the premise of this show is that it's a couple decades later and Ash is, well, Ash. He is still that same old character that we knew, and the great thing about the character of Ash is that he's such a schlub. He is great at killing deadites. It's his calling in life. But when he's not killing Kandarian demons, there's not really anything else to him of quality. So he's just working at S-Mart. I mean, value stop. Wait, why didn't they just keep calling it S-Mart like they did in the movies? Did they lose the name S-Mart in some kind of a legal battle? Oh my god, does that mean that there's a real S-Mart out there? Because if there is, I will go there cosplaying as Ash. Don't think that I won't! So it's a couple of decades later, which means that Ash has gotten older, he's gotten out of shape, and he's somehow gotten even sleazier, and none of that is going to help him when the evil returns. So, he now has to set off to try and undo this curse one final time, and joining him on his mission are his fellow S-Mart, I mean, value stop, employees Pablo and Kelly. And together, the three of them are going to set out on a cross-country trip to return to where this all started to try and undo this evil one last time. But, to make matters worse, they're not just being followed by an evil that is possessing everything in their path, they're also being followed by the law. Because Ash is wanted for murder, because apparently if you just chop a bunch of people up with your chainsaw arm, you can't just come in and tell them, Nah, it's cool, Your Honor, you don't understand. They were all demon zombies. No need to thank me. It's what I do. Ow. So, not only is Ash on the run from demons and now the law, but there's also Lucy Lawless chasing him down and trying to stop him, and we don't know much about her character. She's very mysterious, but she has some kind of a connection to the Necronomicon, and it becomes clear very soon she's not telling us all that there is to her. Now, that might sound like kind of a complex plot, but honestly, it's really simple when you watch the show. It's just Evil Dead the Road Trip, and honestly, that simplicity works for it. In every single episode, they find themselves stopping at a brand new location, and every single stop actually advances the plot, and it makes sense why they'd stop there. As far as the structure of this story goes, this is a tight plot. No episode feels like it was a filler they just had to throw in there. Every single episode feels of importance. But you guys don't care about that. You just heard me talk about how this is one of my favorite horror franchises of all time, so you want to know, is it scary? Well, sometimes. Yeah, there are some solid scares on this show. In fact, in the very first episode, there is a jump scare that's kind of brilliant, and it did legitimately get me. And towards the final few episodes, I won't spoil what happens, but they do return to their horror roots, and they kind of nail it. But overall, this TV show focuses more on humor over horror, and I'm fine with that. Because yes, I did say that this is my favorite horror franchise of all time. However, the progression of that original trilogy 
did start off from horror and then go to humor. That was the natural progression of Ash's character and of this movie franchise overall. Evil Dead 1 was a straight up horror movie. Evil Dead 2 was half horror, half comedy, and Army of Darkness, the third film, was almost entirely humor. And don't even get me started on Evil Dead the Musical. All joking aside, Evil Dead the Musical is one of the best shows I've ever seen. Not even lying. That is legitimately the truth. If you find out it's coming to your town, I don't even care if it's just some poor college troop that's putting it on. You get yourself tickets. You will thank me. But my point is that one of the reasons why this movie franchise was so successful is that it realizes the charm and charisma of its star, Bruce Campbell. And in this TV show, Bruce is back, baby. Yeah, this is the Bruce that we wanted to see. Ash is back. Now, I'll admit, he does have a couple of lines throughout this series that do fall flat, but I think that's a little bit more the fault of the writers than Bruce himself. But when Bruce and the writers are both on point, he is one of the best characters on TV. There is a moment in which he is trying to talk his way out of paying a check at a diner, and it's one of the greatest douchey jerk comedy moments I've seen in TV history. But the humor isn't just used to show the incompetence of Ash, it's also used to show that, yeah, this guy is actually skilled at what he does. They know how to use the humor to actually make him seem smart when they need to. In the second episode, he's at a dinner party and he thinks that someone there might be a deadite and the interrogation scene between him and that character is one of the funniest moments in the series and yet it also makes you look at Ash like, this guy actually knows what he's doing. But that's not to say that he can't also bring the emotions when he has to. I'm not going to spoil anything, but in the final couple of episodes, we do get to see his range as an actor, and yeah, he knows exactly what he is doing in this role. When he has to be dramatic, he's dramatic. When he has to be scary, he's scary. And when he has to be funny, of course, as I said, he is hilarious. But it's not just him, this entire cast is on point. Lucy Lawless? This entire season, as I watched her, I just kept thinking, why is she not in more stuff? I forgot how good of an actress she was until I saw this show. And his two new sidekicks, Pablo and Kelly? Listen, I'll be honest with you guys. The entire season, I just kept waiting for a chance to not like them, because you know how it is. When you have a hero that you love, and they get older, and then suddenly, there's two new kids following them around, and they're always annoying, and they're always so forced, and the TV show is just like, no, you like them, right? And you're like, no, you haven't given me a chance to like them. And they just force them down your throat, and yeah, this is not that. These two are actually legitimately good. Not only are their characters great, and they actually add a lot to this story, and they're actually competent and you see them grow and develop as the show goes along, but also, the actors playing them are really good as well. They actually have a lot of charisma with not only each other, but also Bruce. You really like seeing Bruce interact with these two. And if the whole point of this season was to lead up till that moment, when Ash had to hand the chainsaw over to one of them, I was kind of hoping it was going to be Kelly, because towards the end of the season she was actually really good. But if you had told me at the beginning of this season that that's what this was all leading to, I would have been like, oh, I don't want to see that. Towards the end of it, I was like, I can see that. Yeah. If you want to make Kelly the new Slayer of Deadites, I'm down with that. The only person in this cast who I didn't really think was that good was the cop who was following them around. I always hate nitpicking actors and actresses because I can't act to save my life, but honestly, she seemed kind of flat to me. However, again, not to spoil anything, but in the final two episodes, she suddenly comes to life as an actress and becomes a brand new character, and I was like, okay, if this is how you're going to be in season two, I'm down with it because you're actually really good in this. So okay, the scares might be a little bit rare, but when they're there, they're actually really good. The charisma and the humor is excellent, and the story is a solid addition to the Evil Dead legacy. Sounds like everything here is great, right? Well... One of my favorite things about the original Evil Dead film is its use of practical effects. In fact, that's one of the reasons why it's my favorite horror film of all time, is because this wasn't some big studio production. 
This was a bunch of college kids who went out into the woods with whatever cash they could scrounge up and a camera and that's it. So almost every single effect in that original film and in many of the sequels are ones that they had to make by hand. In fact, there are several great books out there that talk about the making of this film and they talk about how the director, Sam Raimi, would have an idea for a shot and then they would actually sit there and go, oh God, how are we going to actually get that shot? And Sam would just go, all right, give me some lumber, a saw, and some nails. And then he would just build from scratch a device to get the shots that they needed. It is actually a great story about young filmmakers going out there and making a movie. But for this movie, they decided to go with special effects. And listen, I understand that's the time. I understand that they're going to tell you when you make this film, you have to use the special effects. But these special effects are bad. And I mean bad, bad. I mean PlayStation 1 cutscenes bad. Most of the practical effects from those original films actually still look pretty darn good. But in this film, whenever you had to see blood or vomit or someone's head explode, it looked so cheesy. Like, it was very clearly an extra layer put on top of the actors who were already there. And it doesn't even look close to real. And yet, the entire time as I watched this, all I could think was, I know you can do better for cheaper because I've seen it in those other movies. And listen, I understand that Bruce has gotten older. I do, so I realize that he can't do all the stunts that he used to do, probably because they almost killed him. Seriously, go back and watch that original Evil Dead trilogy. Those movies might as well have a Blu-ray extra on them where they have an almost killed Ash counter at the bottom of the screen. But here's the thing, this film still occasionally tries to capture that, and it just doesn't feel right. Like in the very first episode, they try and recreate a scene from Evil Dead 2 where Ash was smashing himself in the face with plates and shattering them. And in that movie, he was actually doing it. In this film, because they don't want Bruce to get hurt, they had CGI pots that he was smashing himself in the face with, and the hand and the pot clearly aren't even touching, and the pot just crumbles right in front of his face. It just doesn't look right. Also, and this one is a really small nitpick, but I have to say it as a fan of this franchise. In the original movies, the evil that was in the woods, that was stalking our heroes, we never saw it. Whenever that evil started chasing them down, the camera would always switch to the point of view of that evil force, and we would see our heroes running from it. We would see them reacting to it but we would never actually see what they were running from, and it's because they knew that whatever we came up with in our minds would be far scarier than what they could actually show us. Well, in this show, they actually show it to us, and it is disappointing. I'm not gonna say what it is, but they kind of pulled a Galactus with it. We'll just say that. Okay, whiny nerd baby moment over with, because end of the day, even though I have those complaints, even though it can be a bit cheesy at times, even though not all the jokes succeed, this is still an overwhelmingly entertaining show. This show is still hilarious. This show can be scary when it needs to. It has a very charming cast. And also, I gotta give this show credit. Because season one, again, no spoilers, but it has an ending that I did not see coming. I didn't see it coming two seconds before it happened, even. Whatever you're thinking in your mind right now about how this first season could end, think about it, picture it, you got it, you're wrong. Whatever you just pictured in your head as the ending to the season is not what they do, and yet what they do, I still looked at and went, yeah, I can see that. That actually makes sense as an ending. Holy cow. And if that's what they're going to be doing for season two, I'm down. I cannot wait to see where season two goes. So, okay, it's time to move on to my score. And unfortunately, two weeks ago when I reviewed Jim and the Holograms, that movie was so bad, it destroyed my rating system. So, until I can rebuild it, I am going to give this film a... Klaatu, Miranda, <laughs> Because did this show get it right? Yeah, basically. 
As I've said, this franchise has had comic books, video games, and reboots all try to come in here and add on to the story and add on to the universe, and none of them have really succeeded, and this one is hands down the best addition to this universe that we've gotten. Out of all those possible sequels that they have come up with, this is the one that I am happy to call canon. So okay, that's it. I reviewed this show and I praised the owner of this book and according to the unspoken bond between content creators and ass-kissing critics, this book must now obey me and I must use its power to undo the evil that is Jim and the Holograms. Nope, not gonna work. All right, I guess that's not going to do it. I guess that show wasn't good enough. That movie, was absolute garbage. So if I'm going to try and negate it out, I have to review something that is absolutely perfect. But that's going to have to wait, because next week I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be in Oregon for a wedding, and that means I don't have time to sit around looking for a perfect TV show. Maybe I should just stick to looking for mystical magical books. Anybody know of any other magical books that are dedicated to banishing evil? Maybe one that I can find in Oregon? Hey everybody, and thank you very much for tuning into this episode, and big thank you to Skate TV. He's the one who actually requested this review, and remember, all my reviews are things that you guys request, and I can't review anything if you don't request it, so leave your request in the comments down below, or if you want to get in touch with me on Twitter and Tumblr, you can reach me at Professor Thorgy. that's another way to request reviews from me, or just to follow me for more geeky fun stuff. Thank you very much for everybody who watched this. I worked a lot on it, so it really means a lot to me. And if you like this, then make sure that you leave a comment, leave a thumb up, and share this all around the web with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. That really is the best way to help out this channel, and I appreciate every single person who does it. Thank you very much for tuning in, and come back next week for another review, and tune into the rest of the shows on this channel for more fun, geeky stuff every single week. Again, thank you all so much, and I'm just going to leave you all here today with a little bit more of the amazing music from Evil Dead the Musical. I kid you not, this really is an amazing show. You guys have to check it out if you ever get the chance, or at least buy the soundtrack. It is easily worth it. Thank you very much. See you next time. Oh, it's time. Time to hurt demon feelings. Inside. These walls there can be. Bleeding. Time to kill. Time to die. Kick you swear. You will die.